This is Road in Johannesburg, South Africa. We're seeing the age zero. Here's my beautiful mother, Tessa. She's exactly 20 years old as I'm born. She's just dropped out of a hairdressing apprenticeship in East London in the Eastern Cape, South Africa. She dropped out because she's pregnant with me. Sam is a primary school dropout. We left school at the age of 11 in Standard 2. We couldn't read or write in English. That's because he arrived in South Africa at the age of 9, a Latvian Jew speaking only Yiddish. My dad is 40 years old. So I'm 0, my mom is 20, my dad is 40. At this age he's already been a diamond smuggler, a car racer, a champion boxer and a champion snooker player. He's also been a poker player and a fight. At this point in his career, he's a steel merchant and he's about to strike it rich. Here I am at the dawn of my dad's millionaireship. I'm playing the role of Joker. This is a mixture of two of the four roles that children of abuse most often take on as a form of survival. The four roles are the perfectionist. This commonly manifests as if you want it done right, do it yourself. How does this drawing look, by the way? I did it myself. The caretaker. I'll make you feel better. The invisible one. I'll just disappear. The rebel. I'll show you. I've gleaned this list of four characteristics from Stephen Farmer's book, Adult Children of Abusive Parents. Here's my mom again. She's just had one too many glasses of a very sophisticated Italian drink named Cinzano, and it makes her so much more sophisticated. So sophisticated that she had taught me to read by the time I was three. But she was also sophisticated enough to have stormed out of the kitchen one day. I was lying in the lounge reading a little comic. She ripped the comic to shreds, and then chased me all the way to the master bedroom where she threw me onto the bed and jumped onto my back and started beating me on the back. My dad again, he's the archetypal sailor with his rub. He's a weekend drunk. He starts at 5 p.m. on a Friday and ends somewhere around lunchtime on a Sunday. But he's also a good all-rounder. When he dropped out of school, he faked his way into Donnie Craven's physical training battalion. He trained under Donnie Craven, became a boxer, became a champ. So, he put his boxing experience to use. He teaches his kids, that's me and my brother Lance, how to beat up bullies. My dad was a kind of a hero to me. I'm nine years old, I'm in standard two. My brother is in grade two. He has a teacher, Miss Worth. She maintains classroom discipline by smacking the kids on the back of their hands with a metal ruler. Lance goes to school. Miss Worth smacks him on the back of the hand, slices him open, draws blood. My brother goes home, speaks to my mom, who phones my dad, who leaves his work, and my dad goes into Miss Worth's classroom, grabs her by the hair, drags her in front of the kids, all the way to Mr. Whitlock's office, and throws her on his desk and says, this is the last time Miss Worth will ever touch my child. Do you understand? Of course, Miss Worth is fired instantly. We never see her again. But as I said, my dad's an all-rounder. One of the things he does, smashes up my mom, smashes up the furniture, smashes up the house. Well, I'm in standard one. My brother is in grade one. It's the beginning of winter in Joburg and it's raining. My brother and I are on the bus, and for some reason, the bus just doesn't stop at our stop and we don't know what to do. The bus driver is ignoring us. Eventually, we end up in the depot in the middle of Germiston, four o'clock on a rainy day. The bus driver won't help us. He refuses to give us a lift back. So Lance and I set out walking hand in hand. We walk for two hours. During this time, we're thoroughly soaked. My brother's lips are blue, and I'm pretty sure my own are blue. And we finally make it home. We knock on the front door. My mom pulls it open. She's in a complete panic. She grabs Lance, hugs him tight, leaves me standing on the doorstep in the wet, and screams at me. Why didn't you give him your jersey, you selfish pig? Six years later, I'm 15. My dad is now bankrupt. Now I'm home from boarding school, and my mom is pissed. Strangely enough, my dad is also pissed, seeing as it's a weekend. Mommy and Daddy are screaming at each other in the dining room. I'm lying in bed reading Ursula Le Guin's Earthsea Trilogy. At a certain point, I hear a bang and a thump, and my mom's screaming. She says, I'll kill you! I'll kill you! I put the book down. I walk through barefoot into the dining room, 
There's my mom pointing a bank sack, cloth bank sack, at my father, then at her mouth, then at my father, then at her mouth, saying all the time, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. My dad is cowering against the wall, looking at her with his hands up. Inside the sack is a 32 ruby revolver with a hair trigger. As I step into the scene, the gun points at me. My dad is on the other side of the table. I size up the situation, I walk slowly towards my mom, and I gently take the gun away from her. Put my hand into the sack, and I uncock the revolver. So great to me standing at exclusive books in Hyde Park, looking at the psychology shelf. The title jumps out at me, it's Acker, Adult Children of Alcoholics by Janet Geringer Voititz. I pull it out, look at the back cover, and there is a list of 13 characteristics of adult children of alcoholics. I read the list, and as I'm reading it, tears spring to my eyes, and I start looking around me to see if anybody can notice me crying. For the first time in my life, I don't feel alone. The first characteristic is that adult children of abuse guess at what normal is. We don't know what normal is. We assume that we are abnormal. We haven't got a clue. We look around us, we don't know what's normal, we don't know what's acting. Adult children of abuse have difficulty with follow-through. We normally can't follow a project through from beginning to end. Adult children of abuse lie when it would be just as easy for them to tell the truth. Adult children of abuse judge themselves without mercy. This is very powerfully linked to the perfectionism we normally exhibit. Adult children of abuse have difficulty having fun. In a world where almost anything that we do can trigger some kind of attack on us, we don't know what fun is. Adult children of abuse take themselves very seriously. I'm dead serious about this. Adult children of abuse have difficulty with intimate relationships. Not me, of course. I'm 39 years old, never been in a relationship longer than three years. Adult children of abuse overreact to changes over which they have no control. Adult children of abuse constantly seek approval and affirmation. What do you think of the video so far? Adult children of abuse usually feel they're different from other people. Adult children of abuse are usually super responsible or super irresponsible. Adult children of abuse are extremely loyal, even in the face of evidence that that loyalty is undeserved. One of the reasons we're so loyal is that we feel that we're going to face disaster if we do anything wrong to the people that we so-called love. Adult children of abuse are impulsive, to the point of dropping the E off the word impulsive. They tend to lock themselves into a course of action without giving thought to the possible consequences of that action. They also don't think of alternative behaviors. This impulsivity leads to confusion, self-loathing, and loss of control. These 13 characteristics are common to all adult children of any abuse. And abuse can be neglect, it can be drug use, alcohol, it can be sexual abuse, it can be emotional abuse. I'm pretty sick of all this stuff, but I'm getting better. My recovery comes from several things. Commitment to therapy, commitment to putting change in my life into action, putting insight into action. I'm a firm believer in the phrase, insight does not equal change. I also belong to an ACCA group, that's Al-Anon Adult Children of Alcoholics. I go every Monday night and I really believe that that's part of my recovery. I read a lot of books, I make a lot of art. And these are some of the resources I'm using to give me balance. This really isn't a pity party or some kind of a gore fest where people feel sorry for me. I made this video in response to a presentation I made for my ACCA group. And I figure it's a story worth sharing in case there are people you know who are adult children of abuse. Maybe you know children who are current children of abuse. If this video has resonated with you in any way and you feel you are an adult child of abuse, please look into getting hold of some resources. ACCA is a very good first step. That's Al-Anon, Adult Children of Alcoholics. There are many, many more like me. and. I'm flourishing, I'm doing my best to survive in a big world, and it's working, and you can too. Thanks very much for watching. Adios. Bye-bye.